There's Mach 3. There's a little PC that's going to be running my machine. It's a Gigabyte Bricks. Wireless keyboard. And the machine itself. I have a three phase encoder equipped servo motors. I have 1605 ball screws and uh, the ball nut and the end bearing blocks that's attached to a quarter inch thick piece of aluminum which is then attached to a half inch slats and then these T slot groove these are not attached yet I'm still waiting on hardware for that here's the uh, milling head I just got done making this motor mount as you can see it holds a uh, one and a half horsepower treadmill motor and then there's this belt isn't attached yet I haven't I haven't drilled the holes for this yet it's just done with the C clamp but uh, you can see how I had to bore this out to give clearance for the uh, spindle and then this is what drives it. There's a shaft underneath here. Uh, I'm getting a different pulley. I don't like this pulley. It's too small. I want it to be a one-to-one -one drive. They're both going to have 30, 30 tooth timing pulleys on them. And uh, so here's the Z-axis. Same deal. Same scenario. 1605. 20 millimeter um, linear rails and linear ball bearing uh, guides on all axes. There's the there's a view of the motor. Okay. Same deal, 1605. There's the rear bearing block, support bearing. And you can see that the rails have the table has one, two, three double wide 20 millimeter bearing blocks on both sides. That should provide it with uh, a lot of uh, support and stability. Um, I'm assuming this will have extremely tight tolerances. You can, you cannot. I mean, that's the table moving, but this this thing does not does not budge. It's uh, extremely well mounted. Let's just say that. I spent a lot of time thinking about how I can make this as strong as possible. These bolts go right into the T-channel on this 8020. There's a T-nut. This one's 5 sixteenths. These are quarter inch because I couldn't fit 5 sixteenths on these uh, support channels for the, the 20 millimeter rails. So let's see, they're quarter 20 and these are um, metric uh, 6 millimeter. And let's see, I made these, custom made these motor mounts out of 3 8 aluminum, 661. And there's another one, they're both identical. This one has, the Z mount has a L angle, 2 quarter 20 stainless bolts. And uh, I hope to get the spindle, that I'm supposed to receive the spindle, um, uh, we call it timing pulley tomorrow so I'll be able to then set the uh, distance on this I can't do that until I get everything uh, set up this is just a spacer block that will come out of there and this whole thing will drop down I'm going to drill a hole underneath that shaft so the shaft can um, go down through the uh, top plate to through this plate here so that it will be even with that you know on the same plane and uh, as you can see, I opted for a um, R8 style spindle head. The spindle head is off a SAG X2 mil. It has a low and high setting, uh, but it's going to be staying in the uh, low setting because that motor will do about 6,500 RPM at the top end. And uh, that would be a little too fast. Divide that in half and that'll give you about 3,000 RPM, which is about all this spindle should be able to do with its stock bearings. You see these four holes right here come around this side. You can see this is a KBIC 120 
motor controller for the um, treadmill. I, I got this separately, but the treadmill motor and this are not a, a set, but this is what I bought to power the treadmill motor because it will output uh, one and a half horsepower, which is exactly what I need. And also, uh, I mounted it to this 3 8 aluminum plate here as a heat sink, and also it faces flush with this, and that will also dissipate the heat. So this should be able to run no problem. This will also have a cover over it, and then I'm going to enclose this whole uh, backside here so that don't, you can't get any uh, shavings and whatnot in there. Um, I'm going to completely enclose this table with um, uh, metal. I'm going to use sheet metal to make uh, metal leafs so that they uh, collapse into each other as it's going, you know, back and forth on the y-axis there. I have ordered the accordion style rubber uh, U-shaped dust cover material to go over on both sides of this and I'll have enough to do this. I got 60 inches. This is only 24 inches wide. Oh, that brings me to the specifications. The table is 23 and a quarter by 24 that way. Okay, so it's 23 and a quarter this way, 24 that way. The the travel on the table is a is about 20 inches on the y-axis. It's about 18 and a half inches on the x-axis, and it's around nine inches on the z-axis. That's pretty good. Um, compared to other machines. There's about a foot of gap right here. So I should be able to put a full size milling vise right in the middle here. And uh, that'll give me plenty of room for tool changes with this at the top here, being this is uh, R8 tooling compatible. And uh, you know, just a standard R8 setup. And uh, that should give me a lot of options. I have Another router, the problem with routers is you can't drill holes with them very easily. Um, they run at a high range and they don't have a lot of torque. And uh, running them at low, low RPM is almost impossible. This will pretty much do everything I ever wanted to do with a milling machine. This is an extremely rigid, quarter inch thick plate on the top. Um, 8020, actually it's Faztec, but it's the same material is 8020. This is one and a half by three inches, so it's 1530. And uh, I have covers coming for all the slots. And so this will be a fully enclosed machine when I'm done. I'm, I'm going to build a cabinet around it so I can run it. This is the upstairs extra room of my house and uh, run, ran out of room in the garage, so this is gonna run up here. And it'll be a fully enclosed. I hope to run a mist coolant or some other type of coolant, maybe a cold air type uh, jet. And uh, anyway, this is my other project. I uh, built that bike from scratch from a blue frame, but that'll be another video someday uh, when I get it done. Anyway, I enjoyed building this. It's almost done. I should have it. Anyway, if you want to see it moving, here's the uh, wireless keyboard. I just set it right here, and you can see there's the cursor key. So that, that isn't tuned up to full speed yet, but it's still pretty. It goes away from me. And and to do the Z I have to hold down the uh, have to hold down this key, so let me see if I can get that going. Okay, I have one finger holding it. Anyway, the Z, that's a little hard to deal with, but there goes the Z and it locked, I wasn't paying attention and, and it grounded out. So I have to uh, cycle power on the controller. Oh yeah, there's another thing. I made this controller from scratch.